Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. We have ourselves another supporters stream and somebody's just pinging me on Discord. I think it's Ricky because he's having some technical difficulties. Uh, let me let him know. All right, <laughs> there we are. Let me unmute everybody now. I could have had them introducing while I was typing, but no, that's me just not thinking like usual. Anyway, uh, how's everybody going today? I'm doing fine. Um, uh, we had a Bible study at my uh, church. We have uh, 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 every two weeks um, on uh, Thursday. So. Okay. Toasty. Cool. Yeah, well, there, there'll be another one tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got you, Mark. Yeah. Go ahead. What, how you doing, Mark? Check, check. Okay, that works better. If yeah. I speak into the... Yeah, it seems I to trail off a little bit, but uh, go ahead. Yeah, it's still... I've got to get a new setup, no doubt. Uh, what have mm -hmm. I been up to? I've got everything kind of in disarray. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. I was having crosstalk, I believe, because I had, a, I had like XLR cable wires, speaker wires, and mm -hmm. like HDMI video laying across wrapped over each other mm. like multiple times so i had to straighten yeah. that out yeah i got some but, crazy disarrayness going on myself over here i'm just trying to trying not to let it interfere with the with the streams and youtube stuff right now but uh, correct um, before too long um i uh, probably either tonight or tomorrow i will start unveiling some information about the super secrets project and um yeah that means in about a month or so a few more things are going to be changing in some interesting ways and so we'll see what happens after that but um yeah i i think i have to double check but i think i have something ready to go for the supporters and then we'll release that and then probably in two weeks we'll take that same video and release Excellent. it for um, non-supporters or we'll just record something else i, I don't know yet I haven't decided. is that's much better isn't it yes is that not you, quite a you bit are better much better now mark so yeah keep it like that you know, and, and you guys on the screen time. says salbu if it says somebody other than you know dan or mark it's yeah it's mark. it's okay it's it's yeah, fine it's, i'm not sure you why know it does that but maybe we'll, we'll just have yeah. uh, salbu change his name to mark mark again or something <laughs> and, and i'll <laughs> change my name to salbu or maybe not <laughs> No, what, whatever on yours doesn't right. matter. It's just on his end. I'm not sure why. It's, I think it's just because <laughs> if you're not using your camera, it messes up the names, apparently. I don't know. Maybe I could try and yeah. update the system. And, but, and uh, I've got a camera. I do plan getting that to get that going very soon. Yeah. I have a little bit of a project of my own I was going to share. Ooh, I um, am... Let, let's get to it in a little bit. Yeah, um, let yeah, me say let's, hi to let's Dan, and then that. we'll give okay. you the floor to talk about your project. And sure, then we'll, yeah. We'll jump into topic. Dan, how's it All going? All right, let's go. Hot. Hot. Yeah, I, I actually, it's extraordinarily <laughs> rare. I actually turned on my air conditioner yesterday, not because the the heat doesn't bother me as much, but it was getting so humid in the house. I was just right. like, that's kind of problematic. So I ran the air conditioner, and it's a little, it's a little warm today, but it's not as humid. It's supposed to drop to like 61 though tonight. So we're going to have all the windows open and then drop down to the 60s and then close it all up and it'll be nice for a few days, I'm pretty sure. Summer so. breeze makes me feel fine. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, Mark, tell us about what you're working on. Just uh, real quick, I was, uh, I'm, I'm in the process of moving, not everything. Now, some things will be local. Uh, I'm in the process of moving much of my work onto a raspberry pi and what i'm going to do i'm going to use like a bare metal as a service or like a, a vm in the in the cloud like through lenota lenota or whatever mm -hmm. to run my uh my windows to, because i have to work with certain apps that are windows specific that way i can continue to run linux uh and not have to have windows locally installed and i'll have a vm as a backup but the cool part of that is not so much moving to the cloud. I am actually going to be shifting over to a Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to be doing what Tom's doing because uh, that's something I've wanted to do. This house has very old electricity, so yeah, that should be a really good cutting, use. Cutting down on power is good, yeah. So yes. not only is my, my main day job 
I have been using the Raspberry Pi flawlessly. I've just been jumping back onto the old computer when I need to do books and accounting. I hear you. Um, but I've also, um, I'll probably have that video out on Saturday. Um, I bought a Optiplex micro tower. It's like seven inch by mm -hmm. seven inch by one and a half Ooh. inch. Yeah. Uh, it runs on 100 watts. It's a uh, i5 6500T with eight gigs of DDR3 RAM. I mean, it's DDR4, I forget. But it's amazing. Like, it, I can't tell the difference. I basically yeah. put the exact same distro I had on the, on the, standard tower media pc i just cut the power back by another third so you know, that's pretty good so yeah absolutely um ricky you're back can we hear you now how's it going ricky, hey, ricky. check check uh we're not hearing ricky yet so whenever you get it figured out ricky chime on in and we'll uh go ahead and uh and uh do that uh we got uh k zangs over on YouTube comments. Keegan, how's it going there? About to pull some bacon wrapped stuffed chicken breasts out of the oven. Oh, man, that sounds so good. Good thing I, I ate not long ago, so I'm not all that hungry. Moonbase Self Grace, greetings. Take me to your leader. Uh, sounds good, but I don't even want to think about the calorie count on that. Mmm, calorie count. Well, actually, though, um, that actually sounds like it'd be very healthy. Believe it or not, eating bacon and chicken and meats and high protein stuff like that is absolutely perfectly bad, fine right? there's really yeah. no problems with um with that the the whole that's gonna kill you is actually um not scientific the uh, uh so long as am you am i good now grilled yeah now we can yeah, hear, we got hear you now how you doing ricky mm -hmm. get the chicken I'm grilled doing okay though. it's it, it's just it was a pain for me to try to get Firefox working, but eighty nine just it messed a whole bunch of stuff up. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, just just an FYI, Jitsi does not work well with Firefox if there's any Jitsi users. Um, okay. so we were talking about it being hot, Ricky. But I imagine that you're in an oven right now. What's it like down there? Uh. -huh. uh Oh, it's pretty much in the eighties. But the good news is, is that it's cooling down right now. 80s? It's in the 80s up here. What, what's wrong? Are you getting a cold spell? I mean, <laughs> it's supposed to be hot I, down I, there. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, Razzle Review says, now they're putting masks on cows. Are you kidding me? I've not seen this nonsense yet. Please. I need to see it. Um, 100 over there. Oh, all right. All right. I got to, right? There we go. I uh, hope the link to the story from the latest, latest video of it's still like, yeah, I have not heard about that yet. Um, but uh, absolutely. Uh, it's kind of weird. Our um, our town, uh, they 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 voted uh, like our our school district and state college is the only district in the area that's still forcing koofy catchers on children, um, which is completely irrational at this point. Kind of interesting. Um, all the other counties are, are just fine, but now they're trying to make sure that everybody in the building either is either is wearing a uh, a koofy catcher or has a Fauci ouchie, and uh, so actually they're uh, potentially looking at a lawsuit at that. Um, so um, I know some people, uh, actually a number of people that are jumping on and trying to create a class action against the school district. Very interesting. So there goes more tax dollars, right? Yes. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, what else do you do? I don't know. Very interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, it's fascinating. So uh, today we're talking about, let's see, we got Mew over on Discord. Uh, let's see, how's it going there? And yeah, we're talking today about convenience and inconvenience. And uh, Ricky, you promoted or um, um, proposed this uh, this topic. So tell us what you had in mind, and we'll see if it's the same thing I had in mind. Yeah. yeah. Well, basically, um, basically, um, this is pretty much my little take on the idea. You can chime in if you want to, Tom. But though, but pretty much the key point is. Today's excite society, we are giving, in my opinion, too much information and pretty much too much time into using all these smart devices and any devices in, in, in general. So I was thinking, um, uh, while yes, devices are have a convenience factor to them, I think, oh, Let's go back like 20 or 30 years ago um, for a bit more inconvenience to where 
technology wasn't so prevalent and we actually had to use our minds and our intelligence to get mm -hmm. stuff done. Yeah. Well, Check. I mean, I, I, I remember those days. Um, I remember the days, of course. It wasn't like 20 or 30 years ago, but certainly 15-ish or so. You know, you had a camera, a digital camera. Now, I was... Um, I was back in the day before uh, I was big into privacy stuff. I was actually like a top geocacher. Um, I was like ranked number six or seven in my state. Uh, me and the top guy in our state, one day we went out and got like 98 geocaches in one day. It was kind of fun. Um, and uh, so we used to do that kind of stuff. And, and those were the days before smartphones. And so you would actually have to get online, mm -hmm. figure out what you were going to do go out, get everything, and then come back at the end of the day and re-log everything. So I had to go in one day. Mm -hmm. We did, uh, we did back, back at the time in geocaching, it was called doing a pocket query, right? So you, you, um, you tell the geocaching.com website where you're going to be, and it'll do a query and sh download everything within, you know, a one mile, two mile, five mile radius, wherever you're at. And then I would dump all of these onto. Now I had a super advanced GPS where it actually supported the geocaching concept. So I would have them stored there and I could type. It was like texting, but it was type something in there. So I had a log of it. It wouldn't do anything, but I'd still have to manually update them. But we'd have to go in there, get out, do our stuff, and come back. And then, of course, if you want photos, you take photos separately, and you have to figure out which photo went with which geocache, things like that. Of course, uh, I was still into it a little bit when smartphones came around, and I had some of the apps where you could, you could search it, find it, snap some photos, and upload it before you leave the scene. And it was, like, revolutionary. Um, but mm -hmm. back in that day... When we had the separate camera, we had the separate GPS, everything was all separate. There was a different, there was a, um, a better intellectualness to it where we had to, um, we had to be more cognizant of the things that we are doing. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what you're saying is we lost cognition about what's going on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly. We lost. Yeah, we lost a lot of cognition, I think, over the last 15 years because, I mean, look at how many smart devices are running around. Look, look at all the AI and robot technologies running around. The human race, in my opinion, has lost their ever-loving minds, and I think it's time for us to back off and stop all this nonsense and go back to what made us us so intellectual in the first place like let's go back 15 years and use the things that made us so good yep absolutely um yeah um let's see dan um what uh what are your general thoughts uh you, you gave a good hearty thumbs up there uh what was your your general thoughts old versus new and things like that i grew up in an age where we did not have smart anything we didn't even have computers. Um, we had old CRT TV sets. We made our own entertainment. Uh, pictures were taken with film. Um, if you were a fortunate one and had money, you could buy a 35 millimeter camera that took really good pictures. And um, of course, you know, nowadays we have all these government regulations, which kind of destroyed a lot of that stuff in the past with cars that got to have all this electronic garbage on it. Or back then, if your car broke down, you went to the junkyard or went to the parts store and got a part and you fix it yourself. It was pretty mm -hmm. simple. And they taught you how to do that in high school. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. You know. And those, we made our own entertainment. Um, if you were fortunate to live in a subdivision, you had basketball games at a friend's house in the driveway. And, you know. We, we just played giant games of tag throughout the whole neighborhood. Two or if, three if, streets would come together. If you were, All the kids from two or three streets. You know. If you were, you know, able to make some extra money doing some odd jobs and stuff like that, you could buy yourself a dirt bike and have some fun out in the mud and stuff like that with them things. Um, you know, snowmobiles used to be a really big thing around here. Nowadays, you're lucky if you find the snow for the snowmobile. <laughs> uh, most of the people that have them live on it, lakes. It, it, it's climate change, global warming, blame that. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's not that. I have a different argument. It's population change. Because a lot of the areas that had big open fields and stuff like that all got land divided. 
and now you got homes sitting on five acres and places and stuff like that and it's all been you know it's all been turned into a money-making scheme it used to be exactly. you had to own a piece you had to own a piece of property for 10 years before you could split it and now it seems mm -hmm. like uh, investors come in and buy up like 50 acres and split it the same day mm, yeah but, um, I mean, next. I'm, I mean, next thing you. I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying, Dan. And I will say this also: next thing before you know it, all our wildlife sanctuaries and conservation areas are going to be gone. Right, and you know the schooling was a lot better back in the last century too. They taught you how to actually use your hands, do things, and think for yourself. You know, uh, they told mm -hmm. they taught you how to create things with your hands. Mm -hmm. um, they taught you advanced mathematics if you were if you had a strong enough brain to take it down i didn't quite fare that well in that area but um um they taught english they taught um any other language that you wanted to speak you could they, they were in the high school curriculum you could try and get in on one of those um cursive writing was mandatory along with regular handwriting <laughs> and um the the, the 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 tools just ain't there anymore they've pulled the tools out to dumb people down unless you know you can mm -hmm. find fend for yourself and learn some of these things on your own i just don't, i'm not implying that today's people are stupid or anything mm -hmm. but their tools have been stripped <clears throat> from them to make them what they absolutely could be yeah absolutely. more than they could it's, be exactly exactly i completely agree with you and the sad group about that is not only are schools stripping the tools away for young people and college people to be successful, they're also teaching them the most ridiculous and dumb stuff you would ever hear in your life. And I think, Tom, if you've heard the news lately, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I can probably guess uh, which one you're talking about, but there's there's a few uh, mm -hmm. few winners coming down the pipeline in the curricula. And people wonder why I still collect vinyl records and play them and everything else. They're a thing that was invented in the past that worked very well. Um, I, I challenge anybody to go find on the Internet how they make these things. A good one RCA put out for, in 1956 has it step by step where it starts out with um, Romeo and Juliet by this conductor. Then it goes through the whole record making process. And you wonder how in the world they did this and charged what they did for the records. I mean, uh, records mm -hmm. back then were like two or three dollars, and they went through all these steps with the the mastering and the the plates and all this other stuff that they had to make to make the stampers. It's just unbelievable what they had to do to make this stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then if it was an error on the master, then you have to do it all over again. Yeah, you have to start all <laughs> over again. Yeah. Back before they cheapened up the process yep. and just put the master right to a, a copper stamper, they used to have like four sections, and in the middle was a playable section that was a positive, where they had they actually paid a lady to listen to the rec, the 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 the, the thingamabob that came off the first cut. For any um, defects, then after that, if there was no defects on it, it would go to the negative mode where they made the stamper from. Yeah. Um, Very good. So, Very good. So with this, um, our society has definitely been made more convenient. And the thing is, is that we have not paid attention to, not looked at or paid attention to the price tag. So I go to the grocery store or any other store, really. If there's not a price on something, I don't know what it is. I generally, I won't even consider it, even if it's something I kind of want. Because I'm not going to be surprised over at the cash register. Now, if it's something I really, really need, sure, we'll take that up and throw that to the cashier first. Hey, what's the price on that? You know, and then I'll make my decision <laughs> there. But the thing is, um, with this, is the price tag that we pay for convenience, it is our data. It is our privacy. It is the things that make us strong, secure, and independent. And we just give it all up. Exactly. I mean, we've given up. We've given up our social security number and our mother's maiden name for a cookie with the Facebook's logo on it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you well, know? you know what, Tom? They make this so hard to avoid. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, you're almost shoved in the corner to do this or else you're singled out as, you know, a non-compliant. Well, that's the thing is it started with convenience. But now since it's so convenient, now everybody in the world has to have this service. It's like, sorry, some of us don't and nor are we getting it. You know, it's like mm-hmm. use Facebook. No, you know, no, under no circumstance. My uh, sister uh, often has, uh, she, usually, uh, she likes to have some fun when um, uh, there is uh, something on the shelf that is not, uh, uh, that doesn't have a price tag. Then she starts wondering, uh, is this free? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's free. Just walk Most out the, the door people, with it. See what happens. Yeah. Most of the people <laughs> I know that are on Facebook are rarely ever actually using Facebook. <clears throat> They're on there either for Facebook games or to, if they need to communicate with a family member that, you know, is easier to get a hold of them on Facebook, about one out of every 10 people actually use it more than, mm-hmm. or yeah, one and, every and, out of 25. And the whole argument, though, that, well, I, I got to communicate with my family over on Facebook. Why? It's You're ridiculous. literally giving Facebook that I data. Don't... They have but, that data. Yeah. They can decrypt that data. They hold those keys. Those aren't private communications no they are not facebook is the is substitute for the old-fashioned party line yeah and and so it's like okay well but my, what about my family on there well you train your family like i'm not going to be on facebook if you really love me as a person as a family member we're going to find another way to communicate we've done I just think- fine with phones mm-hmm. we've done just fine sitting down at a desk and writing a letter we've done just fine with email Use that. Or, hey, use one of the many other more privacy-respecting services that are like Facebook. Teach them to use yeah. Signal, you know, things like that. Yeah, so we have technolo- technology that's underutilized. People can now use mm-hmm. something like Jitsi and actually see mm-hmm. each yeah. other without mm-hmm. Facebook. It's better. It's yeah, better. And, exactly. Yeah, and, and we're using a Jitsi server that I'm hosting on my platform, but you don't have to. You go, is it like, is it jit.si or is it jitsi.me or yeah. whatever the public Jitsi site is, and you can create your own conference for free. Yeah. You know, you don't have to pay anything for that, and they're not recording it. There's no evidence that they're recording it or things like that. Mm-hmm. So that's the, yeah, that's the thing. Him. So we have convenienced mm-hmm. ourselves to the point where – we have lost the ability to take back control of ourselves. Uh, thank you, Soldier, yep. for the uh, on yep. um, it's, uh, in the live chat line in uh, Discord. It's meet.jit.si. It's free, guys. You can use that. No account. Just go right over mm-hmm. there. Establish a complicated meeting name and give that to people you want to chat with. Yeah, the other people don't even have to have a camera as long as they got a microphone they can join in. Yep, yeah. so I've been on this chat and, 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 consistently without a camera. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and, yes, plus, and plus here and, and plus here's the thing about Facebook. Yes, there are alternatives. I mean, I mean, I mean, I know nobody talks about it, but I still use MeWe every every now and then. MeWe isn't as bad as Facebook, thank mm-hmm. God. Um, there's all there's also Gab, which I mm-hmm. heard is pretty good. There's Moons. There is the thing that I think that people need to start embracing instead of all this corporate stuff, embrace decentralization. There's a plethora of decentralized websites and decentralized free and open source Mm -hmm. software. And this is what I, this is what I say. This is what I say. This is what I say, Tom. Decentralized is good. Mm -hmm. Centralized is bad. Correct. And, and this is why it is on our list to work to work on a matrix room. You know, Element, which we use through Matrix, Element has completely replaced Skype. Everything I used to use Skype for, Element. Now I just got to get well, on it. You know, well, and that is well, dece- not only, uh, well, decentralized. Well, ahead, Ricky. Well, well, pardon me for interrupting, but not <laughs> only has Element replaced Skype, Tom, it's replaced Discord, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll move there because, like, we use Discord uh, because it's the community really wanted it. It wasn't a hassle to do. It is a hassle to do Matrix. We will do it when I'm to the point where I actually can. Uh, it's going to take some extra time uh, that I don't have right now. Um, but Discord is not that great for 
privacy. In fact, it's mm-hmm. probably pretty bad. The only reason that we use it, even though it's probably not all that bad, is because it's a small company. It's not corporate. That's why if Microsoft did end up buying it, no. Uh, they under, they're doing mm-hmm. a deal now with Sony, I believe. That's eh, I'm not as concerned about that as I would be with Microsoft. One of the um, most yes, disturbing. Yes, we are getting a Matrix bridge sometimes. Go ahead, Mark. One of the most disturbing things that I have seen out of Microsoft recently, it just popped up on my screen like five or ten seconds ago. Um, It's putting all your passwords into Microsoft OneDrive. Yeah. And sucking them into the cloud. That's what Tom was talking about the other uh, other night on Friday, I believe, or something. Uh, How Microsoft is now implementing... Everything is going to their OneDrive cloud for Microsoft customers. Mm-hmm. So they're going to, they are, their, their company is now designed to be cloud services and they're not really focused on Windows as a platform so much, other as than just a means to get your data. Pretty yeah. Much. That, talking again, getting back to that convenience versus inconvenience. Uh, when I got this new PC that I'll review soon, of course, it had Windows installed on it. It was a refurbished, and they're like, hey, here's Windows Pro. Yay, Windows Pro. But, you know, anytime you buy a refurbished computer, boot it on with whatever the existing operating system is, play around with it, put some tests through it, make sure the thing works, you know. You don't want to mm-hmm. wipe the thing out, install Linux on it to find out the front USB ports don't work, you know. And mm-hmm. so uh, I, I played around with it, and I, you know, and ran the Windows 10 Pro on it, my lord, that is an annoying operating system. How do you people use that yeah. crap? <laughs> Holy <laughs> mother. Well, like, like I'm sitting there for literally dog. one hour just Shut to see up, if it Tim. works. Pop ups. You should switch to Bing. Bing, it's, you should change your privacy settings. We want more of your data. Like, it's got like right. multiple <laughs> advertisements. It's like, dude, what the hell are you doing? I'm here trying to do work. You're annoying the hell out of me. When, yeah. Why do people use this crap? You set some things. <laughs> you shut up 10, it shuts a lot of that off. And then you can yeah. go further with shut up 10, or you can actually set it uh, yeah, to show but, fewer yeah, notifications, and you can go in and configure. What your notifications are going to be. The point is it shouldn't be that naggy by default. Yeah, I, I, sh- I don't want to install a third-party application to get the operating system to shut yeah, the hell up. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You know? It's ridiculous. It's, it's insane. You That's have why I, I can't that. wait to see what a Windows 11 has in store for us. I believe that yeah. they are starting to make the announcement soon. Well, um, we're you know, still not bringing it up on the news this week because they still keep yeah, on teasing it. Yeah, but that's what when they said rate. that when they are, uh, when they released Windows 10, they they actually said that this was going yeah. to be the last. This is the Windows last version. Windows version. No, no, yeah. no. We found a way to make it worse, guys. We're doubling down. <laughs> the only reason I run Windows at all <laughs> because I'm coming back to Pulseway as an RMM. It mm-hmm. is going to be the one application that doesn't. Ha- it may actually have it by now, but I have to use. There's one or two applications that I have to use in Windows because I can't easily get access to my Mac OS. Mm-hmm. I tried because um, I'd have to have it on an actual Apple computer, uh, but I tried so see me, uh, so sue me or whatever, and it's it's decent. It works. It's mm-hmm. a it's a project by Alan Pope. You yeah. can certainly try it out if you're a Mac OS enthusiast. And to for me, I wasn't all that impressed with Mac. I don't think I want a Mac as bad now. I just I don't want to open my it. mallet and part with my money for a Mac. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Um, yeah, they're, they're really expensive. expensive. And frankly, I I I, I love <laughs> Linux. It's it's working for yeah. me on everything I need to needed to work for. You know, um, kind of fun. Razor mm-hmm. Review predicts that the next the Windows 11 will be Vista on steroids, which makes sense because Windows tends to do a really good, a really bad, yeah. a really good, a really bad. Yep, that's their history. Um, uh, although Windows 10 is Windows 10 really good or really bad? What's your guys' perspectives of as any? It's Windows a mixed people? bag. It, there's some um, good things, but there's not a lot of. Good I think they just went to bad, 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 bad. bad. <laughs> right. I think there, there are right after right right after right. seven. Uh, Ricky, what's your thought? I think, in my opinion, and now this is just my opinion. I think if we just separate the privacy and the yeah. security stuff from Windows it's 10 and just, an operating system. and just look at what it has to offer, <laughs> it yeah. is an improvement over Windows 7. Yeah. When mm-hmm. it affects the sound, the uh storage capacities, and yeah. 
let's face it, when it comes to gaming, Windows is still dominating over gaming, sure. though Linux sure. climbing up there closer. Yeah. Yeah, Linux I mean, if, is if my you need to use major Windows ground. or you want to use it, I'm not mad at you. Um, it's just my lands, yeah. it would drive me crazy. Well, Ricky, I, don't, I, I got don't two terabytes of games that I play on Linux. I don't mm. like to use it. Like when cool. I was on Windows in a VM, that's the mm. best way to run Windows. Go ahead in a VM. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Uh, yeah, um, Windows, believe it or not, Windows in a VM will do a pass through to you, your USB ports. If yeah. you go up to the top of VirtualBox and mm. check yep. the USB item that you want mm. it to pass through to. Yeah, and you yeah, need to install the extensions as well. Me. Yeah. It seems to run smoother in a VM for it yeah. did for me anyway. So, so I guess getting back to our topic here, is Linux actually inconvenient, or is it not? I would say it, in a way it is, in that it's not going to try and automatically prompt you and set up and change all of these things. Although, of all of the annoying things Windows does, it's like, would you like to use oh, Edge? Is not set as your default browser. Would you like to set Edge as your default browser? I'm like, yeah. sure, why not? Click yes. And it just gives us a pop-up. Go into your settings and change it. Like, wait, what? You want to change everything automatically, but you're giving me instructions on something to do? I mean, I'm a Windows ignoramus over here. I don't know how to do that. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. I, I would for say... Me, I was... the, um, the, um, for me, the issue yeah. is uh, just the opposite. Uh, um, Windows is an inconvenience um, for the, just for the fact that I'm not, I haven't been using it since 2008. And that would me, probably... Uh, Linux is the, um, the, the convenient way, and it's also the um, uh, 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 best way. But, uh, and not only that, whatever problem you're having with mm -hmm. Linux, you can always do a search and find an answer for it. There's other mm -hmm. people who had the, mm -hmm. the same problems. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. it's kind of like a Bantu in that way for the mm -hmm. Linux. Exactly. And the anything. thing and, yeah. and, and the Linux that I love so much is it does have that true inconvenience factor because you have to work for it instead of, you know, having an offer system instead of having an offer system like Windows that'll just put a silver spoon in your mouth 24-7. But when it comes to Linux, you have choices, you have options. If you want to go extremely inconvenient, go for Arch or go for Gen two. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you want to, I don't know. I don't know. If, um, if like you, I I run Arch on the media PC, runs Arch. The production PC runs Mint. I, Arch is not really inconvenient. Yeah, like, or you have right now. Snack right <laughs> now, I don't have Pomac on there because Pomac is not caught up with Pac-Man six yet. Um, that's a little annoying being is that I just switched this computer over. So the old one that this is replacing, I did not push updates because I don't want to mess any of that up right now, but this one, I didn't have a choice. Right. And so I don't have comic, but eh, so what? I don't have a, I don't have a GUI package manager, which I want. I will install it when it's fixed, but for now I can run just fine without, you know, no big deal. You know, years ago, I would have told you keep everything up to date, latest package when it comes out, push the update. Microsoft Windows has changed that. I mean, mm -hmm. the, with Windows updates, yeah. they are absolutely horrid. I, I, I did find my, my Linux yeah. Mint computer has not been updated so long ago that I yeah. can't decrypt some of my encrypted drives. Mm. <laughs> well, here, Yeah, you well, got to get your thing. garlic bag out when you do an update with Windows. <laughs> yeah, and here's, a, here's, a thing, here's a thing, Mark. Besides the update... There's mm -hmm. this one piece of information that I found out about Windows that I for completely forgot out, and I had to re-research this in order to make sure it's correct. There is a backdoor implanted into Windows that has been in existence since Windows XP. Yeah, NSA backdoor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that doesn't kind of surprise me. I've heard that before. Yeah. Um, let's catch up on some comments. If anybody sees any comments that you would like That's to specifically read, go for it. Uh, we did get an update on the cows with masks. It is to trap methane burps. They're masking cows <laughs> to trap methane burps. <laughs> but, but I thought that the problem was that they're, they're flatulence. Um, it, in fact, it's so bad that um, if you guys didn't see the, um, the Biden uh, press conference, which was just a giant... Um, uh, it was a giant train wreck. I mean, all sorts of fun things. He, he, he forgot he was president. He forgot to tell people to go at ease. His wife had to tell him to pay attention. But one of the things that he said in there is that uh, climate change is 
the the most critical threat against America now. So Babylon B runs with that and says um, military uh, geared up in battle armor against the cows to save the climate. (laughs) I would argue. Uh, I thought it was the cow farts. So why are they not filtering and putting putting masks on their butts too? I mean, they need to be putting like full fledged catalytic converters on these on these cows. I mean, come on, guys. Balloons, Uh, man. To return it to natural gas. I would argue the biggest threat Um, to. Jacksonville the US is internal. It's our own people. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Jacksonville, mainly. Florida has brand, banned CRT. There you go. Um, mm-hmm. Goldberg has deleted a Facebook, aka DARPA. <laughs> DARPA Life Log. <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm glad that you're that you're off the book. Um, got the picture that makes the cow look like it's wearing a breathe right to it. <laughs> <laughs> my, my my cows on a breathing machine, you know. I just uh, saw a, a comment least... that I like. Uh, 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 Jane Goldberger says, "If you're not using the commands jobs, FG, and BG, and pressing Control C all the time, you're missing out." <laughs> I do that <laughs> all the time. <laughs> there you go. Um, only social media I've had in the last few years is LinkedIn because I had to create one for class. I'm done with college classes. That account is long gone. There you go. Uh, Saddle Ridge, greetings, venture technology, events convenience is, equals degraded self-sufficiency and degraded privacy. Amen to that. Yeah. People I think agree. I'm crazy because I yep. don't have Facebook. I think they're crazy because they do. <laughs> there you go. Hello, Anna Rita. Any cookies today? Um, I took my peanut butter cookies to a church, uh, church picnic because, because we're like, you know, we're like grandma killers over there and. Uh, I forgot my cookies. I picked them up yesterday and ate the rest of them. They were good. Uh, Babbler49, hello. How are you doing? Um, convenience is nice at times, but I learned to embrace inconvenience so you can get used to it and then you never want to go back. Although having a convenient wife is a plus. Yes, you have somebody, having a wife that brings you cookies is a good thing. A track was supposed to replace records, by the way, of collection of glass 16 RPM records from the 78. Uh, Dan, what is your thought? Eight tracks versus records. All records any day of the week. I would skip right over eight tracks and go to cassettes because eight tracks had a lot of problems. I mean, they just weren't because the way the tape had wound up in the center and it's got to pull the tape from the center out to the front. And then wrap it around the outside of it again in a circle. Um, eight tracks kind of had a tendency to bind up or tighten up on their own and then tear the tape and all that. And they're just, you know. Yeah, I, I remember them sounding like garbage. Well, that's because you have eight tracks on a, on a single, um, you know, like um, half inch wide piece of tape. And they got that idea from the recording studios because they were doing like 24 tracks wide so they could give a drummer his track, um, a guitar player his track, and someone else their track, a keyboard player their track, and a singer their track, and they could tinker with all this stuff independently. Mm-hmm. I think uh, cassettes were better than CDs for me. The interesting part is that um, cassette tapes are actually uh, having a, 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 a boom uh, uh, this last year. Uh, I, um, there was an article in uh, the Register, I believe, uh, a few weeks ago, about uh, last year was the biggest sale of cassette tapes in the last 20 years. Wow, mm-hmm. maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll wow. look to sell my collection of cassette tapes. Wow. I, although, I have to tell you guys, I bought a VHS tape the other day. <laughs> And then you have a player. <laughs> I no, I so I asked around friends, and I'm like, I, I needed to borrow a VCR from somebody to uh, digitalize this VHS. I had to go to three different people. Everyone was using their VCRs. Like what? <laughs> wow. I still have a. VCR, I got a. Uh... <laughs> I pretty much got a a uh, little CRT right next to me in the corner over here with a VCR built into it. Nice. Yeah, I remember those. Um, I will, I will, by the way, take the convenience of my NAS and watch a movie on uh, any device on my network way before I'll take, take, uh, be kind, please rewind. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I did rewind my movie once I was done digitalizing it. I will say that. And I I got a pretty good (laughs) recording on off from OBS. It was very good. 
Um, Vista is what made me want to go back to Linux. I didn't find the right distro at the time and stuck out through 7. Got that Zorin disk off of Linux Magazine. Oh, there you go. I wish I could escape Windows, finish college classes, but now I'm doing an internship at a federal research lab, and they are just deep in Microsoft products. Oh, boy. That's fun. I think... Uh, oh, damn. Oh, oh, go ahead, Mark. I just think, uh, you know, with everything going to the cloud, it's inevitable that more and more things are going to go to the cloud. Yeah, was it it's, yesterday? They only or... go to the cloud if you want to put them there. Yeah, right. Was it, was it yesterday or two days ago that, like, a half of the internet went down because one guy made a mistake at one company, I think. Yeah, that's the, it's the type of stuff. Whoops. I was thinking more along the lines of not owning anything and everything being subscription-based. Yeah, that's and a That problem. would be ultra convenience. Yeah. You had talked it, about that I mean, just before it, recently. It's ultra convenient in a way until but you hit bad times and you lose your job and now you lose right. your entertainment you lose everything at least right. at least me if i lose my job and i can bunker down and and i can at least keep watching the movies that i have you know yeah. and i'm not going to be that much these out things, if i had to kill i don't think these things else. are going to completely go away and as a matter of fact i think some of the smarter people are going to actually embrace this cuz you mm -hmm. now you can walk into target and they really do sell brand new vinyl records there and mm -hmm. at walmart cool. Mm -hmm. They even sell so brand new for them. There, there's even brand new record players being produced by Auto Technica. Yeah. They sell those at Walmart oh. and Target. You can go to Fluence and get uh, a new turntable. The uh, U turn makes an orbit turntable, they call it the orbit. Mm -hmm. I mean, these things are coming back slowly. Yeah, um, Mac users, um, airdrop. What all That's do we awesome, get with airdrop? We have uh, a question Is there an airdrop equivalent? for Linux slash Ubuntu. The only thing I can think of as close as far as file transfer is Warpinator, which is a new Linux Mint project. Uh, it's available as a flat pack for any distribution. Basically, hey, it will tonight? enable you to uh, turn it on on both computers and just send a file over uh, wherever you need it to go. And they actually are working on some new updates as well to specify where, what and how it's going over. So that's one for files. Is there any other features that AirDrop has and uh, corresponding um, alternatives in Linux? Anybody know of? I don't know what that is. <laughs> not, that I, not that I know of, no. Uh, all right, Mark, it's probably I up don't to you. Really know what, is, what all can AirDrop do? Is there a Linux alternative? I think it's mainly, uh, it's mainly kind of like KDE Connect. Like it, it can interface with other devices and send files wirelessly over the air. Yeah, like like I, I know like, I know at its core. It I've used is, it one time. Yeah, it is a file transfers, but I thought at one point in time it also could could sync. Um, is that also what allows Apple to sync uh, browser windows and things, or is that something else? Your settings and stuff. No, no. There's like if you're watching, Apple has something where if you're watching yeah. a video or something on your iPhone and then you come close to your computer, it can port that same video in the same location over. I think Windows is working that's, on something that's, like that as well. Th there's that's, CarPlay and mm -hmm. then there's something that does that. It's not CarPlay. End okay, off, so it's not AirDrop. AirDrop. So, so if AirDrop is your file base, um, yeah, yeah, there's two. If you're talking about phone to computer, KDE Connect, uh, Zorin, yeah. um, what's Zorin's project project called? I forget. Maybe it's Zorin. I don't know. They have a uh, an equivalent one. There's also Warpinator, yeah. which is computer to computer, but I don't know if yeah. it's cell phone based. Warpinator so is kind of like a DLAN yeah. equivalent. If yeah. you've ever heard of DLAN with Windows, yeah, yeah, it's really cool if you have multiple so those machine are the things, running man. Those are the things you'd look for. I yeah. have a you can have like your whole network you get back around to me. Say it again, Dan. I'm sorry. Um, when you want to get back to me, I have an inconvenience pet peeve. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Actually, let me. Oh, we're almost done with the comments. Then there, there is. Um, there's this big push by companies to get you to actually stop getting paper documents in the mail and do everything electronically. This frosts my rear end to no end. Yeah, um, because when you get a paper document in the mail, it's got the company's address, phone number. It's got printed out details that hold up in court instead of you just getting a, a billing notice on your phone in the in the text message area. Oh you God, owe this much, you know, 
and there's no other information attached. Like I needed to call my banking headquarters, and if I didn't have the paper document that had my that my statement was contained on, I would have had the phone number to where I needed to reach to correct the problem. Mm-hmm. And this is something that really irritates me when they try and get you to switch from pay, switch to paperless billing. Yeah, yeah. That, and in, that, in my country, it's gotten a little further, uh, uh, a, a little further. Uh, yeah. We now have um, uh, electronic um, mail, as in the old-fashioned yeah. uh, postal mail, mm-hmm. and um, uh, uh, companies can uh, choose, uh, they are uh, opting more and more to send the uh, the mail and uh, the uh, the bills and so on uh, electronically but you uh, we have to uh, sign up for one of two electronic mailboxes and um, i have um, uh, actively uh, um, uh, decided not to um, uh, sign up and i have uh, 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 selected that i do not want um, electronic uh, contact with my um, uh, with the well, yeah software. when you have your bills electronically sent to you in whatever form they 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 are in they they actually go over the internet which can easily be hacked and yes. you know your stuff is at risk yes if it comes and in the also behind a weak password oftentimes with an email account if someone has set a weak password and they're getting a legal document like a house situation yes a lot of people looking for homes right now and can't find them because of all that if they get finally get a deal on a house and you get a legal document through that, you've got a weak password in your email. Someone could like probably steal the property somehow. If they, you know, the, the biggest reason that I'm not uh, using the uh, new electronic mail, for, uh, it is um, uh, uh, the government who uh, 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 wanted this and they had uh, two uh, providers. But uh, in order to read the mail, you have to uh, use a web browser and sign in um, using passwords. And um, you can't uh, set up an, uh, a local client like a, an email client. Mm-hmm. So, um, no, I'm just doing that. And sometimes I'm, 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 I will get a bill from um, in my um, uh, previous home. I had in the um, internet provider, I had, um, they would have a, a, a copy of the bill. And it was uh, printed out because I didn't have. And there was another paper from the mail company uh, s- saying that uh, I could have had this uh, electronically and saved paper. And I was thinking, yeah, you could save a lot of paper by not printing this uh, warning to me. I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's um, that is like like there are definitely the conveniences to doing the electronic stuff. The biggest problem I have with that is. People are not diligent enough that when you get, for example, you do it on like credit card statements, you're not opening it up. You're not seeing, you're not taking count of what is and is not on your credit card. And that is a problematic thing. That is. Yeah. Yeah. So and also in uh, our system, uh, it is a um, uh, privacy concern because mm-hmm. uh, under some circumstances, uh, the uh, uh, company sender, um, uh, uh, whenever uh, we open an electronic mail by signing into the uh, web platform, um, they get a notification that we opened the mail. Yep. Yeah, which you may not have actually done. You may have accidentally clicked on it and not opened it, you know, which is kind of problematic. So absolutely. Yeah, those um, signals are all, not always clear. In my invoice ASAP, it will alert me if a customer has viewed or mm-hmm. opened the email. But they could have opened it and exited right back out and went to watch a video or something. Yeah, that's not really that. Yeah, or uh, if you are using email, um, if they are using a client like I do, um, I uh, where they where they are uh, turning off uh, uh, external uh, elements, then uh, you won't get a notification of any kind. Uh, mm-hmm. So there's that. Yeah, uh, Anna Rita says save the, the cows. Line, I need my barbecue steak this summer. Okay, there you go. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Cows versus all those private jets I see in flight aware. I think the jets are more carbon flatulent. Yeah. Uh, earthquake five minutes ago or a cow fart. Uh-oh, was there an earthquake five <laughs> minutes ago somewhere or did a cow fart? I don't know. Oh, when, oh it was Rosie O'Donnell farted apparently. <laughs> I think I think we've uh, become addicted to convenience. Oh, that absolutely. Said, That's the problem. That was said, alluded to earlier on, 
That's the problem. We everything is so convenient. We expect it, and if, when we don't get it immediately, and it's not effortless, well, we get frustrated. Why convenient is, is a product, and um, th when and you pay for it with your your data or some other means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always a price to it, you know. Convenience yeah. comes at a cost of security and privacy. Yeah, and um, um, uh, Richard Stallman uh, often used to say this in uh, his talks. Uh, uh, especially during the Q&A afterwards, that um, um, uh, ha having the inconvenience is uh, often uh, worth uh, is often worth doing for, for the sake of having privacy and security. Yes, it's absolutely mm -hmm. worth. Um, Razzler Review would like to apologize to any cows she might offended by equating them with Rosie O'Donnell. Um, <laughs> Hello, Steve Marion. Uh, Greetings. How are you doing? Um, let's see. Ubuntu, uh, um, we are answered the equipment. Like, we, we will read the comments. Well, hopefully, we will read the comments. Um, uh, business firm, okay, uh, confirmed Warpinator. Yeah, have a look at Warpinator. That should work. Remember those eight track players had a huge pain in the backside? Mm, yes. Yeah, it was the way they were constructed. <laughs> Still buy DVDs and CDs, rip the CVs. I can take the files anywhere. Love having those offline. I even check out DVDs from the library. Yeah, I do yeah. the same. Uh, whenever I buy a movie or a, uh, or a, 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 a music album, I insist on uh, buying a physical copy. Um, I'm not paying for any downloads because L I'm um, not actually buying the thing. Let me, in, let me let you in on something. When you buy a brand new record today, it comes with a coupon card. It looks it looks something like this. Oh, you go to the website and you can download the music that's on your record. Sweet. Nice. That's how and you do it. There is also the um, uh, cool thing of actually having the um, uh, a physical yep. cover is and it, having a booklet you, that you can uh, open. Yeah, exactly. Is it the actual MP3s or is it tied to an app? Um, no, they're MP3s. Okay, good. Most okay, of them cool. are. I'd um, love to see a lossless option. Um, the, the MP3s normally come in their um, lowest compressed form, which is uh, two uh, okay. uh, two twenty kilobits that's per second. That's not that bad. That's that's pretty twenty. Yeah. Well, that's about CD quality. Two five six is pretty high. That's CD quality. Yeah, yeah. twenty two is pretty low quality. <laughs> Well, 94 um, is like kind of the bottom. Yeah, yeah well, 90, 94 is the minimum you need for podcasting and audiobooks. I, th yeah. I can't remember about audiobooks, but podcasting for sure is what yeah, you, if you have. This, but 320 is usually yeah. what you get. Yeah, 320 is really good. Um, yeah, Logitech Flow Mouse, does this quality. work with Ubuntu? Um, I'm not sure specifically what the Flow Mouse is. Anybody familiar with the Flow Mouse? Um, I'm not familiar with it, Tom, but. But I do have a Logitech C920 webcam, and it works perfectly. Yeah, everything else I know of Logitech works just fine. Yeah, the um, only thing that the, uh, often the, uh, the, don't work with Linux, there is um, um, a few uh, wireless uh, uh, cards and, uh, and some printers. Um, pretty much everything else it just works out, out, out of the box with no problem. So yeah, Here in Canada, they send you your bank account statements with your account numbers on there on the statement. So if anyone steals your mail, they get your account numbers. Yeah, Somebody wasn't thinking right on that one. Yeah. I am low key thinking about switching. Speaking of convenience, I rarely ever have to print anything. So I'm thinking about just getting like a thermal printer to print shipping labels uh, so that I can just take it to Wilkes Print and ship. Yeah. And right. uh, not printing like having a big printer to print anything, yeah. having a scanner app on my phone. Yeah. So um, as a CPA, Pitchfork Rebel is a CPA, um, I always advise people to download the PDF statements directly from the bank or company website and retain at least five years of those statements. Yeah. Paper statements can be lifted from your mailbox. Um, those are valid points. However, that is also why I have a post office box. Um, not as easy to lift from that. However, you do have the occasional postal worker who's a moron and puts them in the wrong box. God, start doing that. Um, but at the same time, that's uh, if you have the discipline yeah. to monthly download those, review them, 
that is a fine way to do it. Having them emailed to you, there's a few bank accounts I have that don't do printed statements at all. And they simply send me an email saying there's a statement to download, but there is no link. There is nothing in that in inbox that specifies what the bank, well, it specifies what the bank is, of course. Nothing that specifies what the account number is or anything else. It just says, hey, log into your online bank portal and, and grab statements. So that, and you know, I can understand that, um, five years, I thought three years for personal seven years for business. That's what my thought was, but, um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think they increased it recently. The, the IRS is really encroaching as of late. I feel like. Yeah, recent. it's, they're, they're getting a little weird. Okay. So Logitech flow allows someone to use one mouse across Macs and PCs. I have no idea, but I'll tell you, if you just do a quick internet search for it, you will probably find uh, an answer one way or the other. Uh, Gary, under GPL license, um, he's a regular Windows user, depending on which Linux distro. I mean, they like Pop! OS or more convenient. Some of them are basically more convenient, some of them are less convenient. Pop! OS is um, great. Yep. And it'll give you the Pop! Store so you can select what apps you do or don't want, you do have to work a little bit for it, but it's better to run Pop! OS than it is to run Windows any day mm -hmm. for privacy and security. I've used Pop! OS with uh, the GNOME tiling and everything. I really enjoy Pop! OS, and I might return to Pop! OS soon. Yeah, Pop! I OS is pretty good. Uh, I do like it. Um, all right, I think we've, uh, we've actually... Kind of ran uh, about as late as we like to take these. I am going to be streaming on the Christian channel tonight. We're talking about how to conform with Christ. If you are interested in such content, I will go ahead and drop the link in the uh, chat here. Um, Dan, we're on you right now, so give us your final words. My final words is, is convenience is kind of um, a product. And if you fall into getting things too convenient and too easy that are not necessarily 100% under your control, you're probably giving up something for it. Mm -hmm. There's a trade-off with everything. Absolutely. Um, Solbu, what do you got? Yeah, um, uh, my advice is that uh, people um, uh, need to uh, figure out or, uh, what is important uh, to uh, keep uh, to themselves and if that uh, 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 ends up them being a little uh, in, uh, inconvenience, then they need to figure out if that is worth the price of having control or having uh, uh, not uh, sharing that with a company or so on. And um, and uh, there really are uh, people who who uh, don't think about it or they they really don't care. And if you really don't care, then um, any option is uh, a good option. And yeah. But if you figure out what is important to you and uh, and if uh, being inconvenienced is uh, uh, worth, uh, worth doing. Okay. Uh, Mark, final words. I was going, uh, I kind of thought it over. Um, I would say security and privacy are two different things, but they go hand in hand. Uh, one big reason why people should want to be private is because when you're more private with how you live and how do you how you conduct business and everyday uh, life situations, you tend to be less of a target for uh, scammers and whatnot online, uh, just by being more private and not giving your data so willingly, using services uh, that are open source and using Linux in, instead of Windows or Mac you're going to be much and not having Facebook. There are things that you can learn on this channel that will help you be less of a target. And you're probably going to avoid a lot of headache in life because of this channel. If you mm. take advice and do some of these things. Also check out Techlor. He's got some great stuff. Yeah. Techlor has got some good, oh, good yeah. privacy stuff. And Rob Braxman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Ricky, final words. I would have to say, um, when it comes to inconvenience and inconvenience, it's pretty much the person's choice slash decision. Yeah. It's pretty much a coin flip. 
you aren't going to really know what you're going to do unless you put the work in. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You get out of it what you put into it. All right. Very good. Yeah. So I dropped the link for the nine o'clock stream. It's one hour from now. Um, in the in there. that's on my Christian channel. So if you are interested in such content, join us over there in one hour for a uh, good discussion. And uh, that is also now where we feed the kitty on Thursdays, so he doesn't get too many kitty treats. So there we have it. If I can bribe you with the kitty. Uh, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, tomorrow, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, the weekly news roundup. If I can get through all the articles. I think I have like 50 I'm gonna articles do to start spot, through. Just for Sol Bay. Ah, <laughs> I'm doing it, kind of. All right. We'll see you guys later. All right. Spock. Bye-bye, everyone. See y'all. Thank you for...